Hello and welcome to L5 Star FC. We've got the Leipzig against Liverpool preview. Very difficult game in the last 16 of the Champions League. Um, well, well, we'll talk a little bit about Leicester. I'm ju- delighted to announce that I'm joined by Wakar and by Salah um, on the Leicester game as we didn't put the Leicester review show out. But uh, what went wrong for you uh, guys? Obviously, Liverpool fell short to Leicester, three goals to one after six minutes of madness. Uh, we'll start with you, Waka. Uh, what went wrong for you on uh, Saturday? Um, I think we played I think we played really well until until the second half came and then six minutes where it all went wrong. Um I think VAR is a shambles. They draw the they draw the lines wherever they want to draw them because do you, um do you remember when we played Everton and Van Dijk got um, injured really badly. They put the line on his elbow, and um, against Leicester, they put his uh, the the line on his out on his armpit. So they need to make sense. Um, Salah's goal, amazing goal, but Alisson and Kabak. I don't know why Alisson came out there. Kabak had it clear. No, he had no pressure, nothing. But you know. Not happy with it. Yeah, I, I, um, at first I, I blamed Kabak K- because he, he wasn't facing the ball. He, he was back to his turn, and Allison had the front row. When I looked at it from a clear, clear-headed perspective, Allison come a long way out to try and clear it, and I'm not sure. Uh, I couldn't hear any sort of sound. Obviously, they had the crowd noise on. Yeah. Um, I was watching it, so I don't, I don't know if there was any shout or anything. Uh, Klopp said he didn't hear a shout, uh, but like I said, with the VAR, I disagreed with that 100. percent I think they draw the lines where they want. Um, to be honest with you, I think. It, it, the line isn't drawn on Firmino's foot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's like, I, I uh, from the first, um, what was it, snapshot, you, you couldn't see any foot, you couldn't see anything playing him on side. So it was like, uh, but anyway, it just all went wrong, all went pitong in the end. But yeah, what went wrong for you, Salah? A lot of things. Start the half well, build up play was good. It's just again those little game, little things in our game that we've been seeing for the past two months. Sloppiness. You can play VAR what you like, but those two goals at the end and the tackle by Thiago was unnecessary. As I said, you can blame VAR what you want. Those we played well. Those seven to ten minutes cost us the game. We should have never been sloppy. I love Thiago, but Thiago should have never never made that tackle. The Allison and Kabak mistake both of their faults. I don't. I don't really blame Kabak because, like, say if it was Virgil, Virgil knows Alisson sweeps those kind of positions, so Virgil would have left it. Yeah. But then Kabak, they knew they were there only one week in training together. So, like, and plus, Alisson should have been cautious that this is a new guy, so I don't think he knows. But it's it's unusual for a mistake to happen like that. And then the third goal, Salah was sloppy. You can't really blame Salah, only goal scorer, but she should have never gave the ball away in that kind of position. So it was... Yeah. It was an okay game, but we were at fault for the goals. You can't blame VR what you like. VR is, is as much as bad as it is, it was our fault for the three goals. So yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the best of games, but we did play good for the first half. Yeah, I I I don't want to blame VAR for it, but I felt like um it did turn the turn the game a little bit but if you want to perform like champions you've got to perform regardless of what whenever that comes through by you've got to you've got to just knuckle on and get through the game and with the, the confidence of Liverpool they do look mentally drained um you know I know we can all blame the fans and Liverpool rely on their fans more than most but it's the same for everybody else um you know, I, f- I felt the press was there on the weekend uh, for the first half. And then the second half, you could see it was dropping off slightly. We were giving Leicester uh, more chance to um, play their game. And it, it, we just, it, just, it just cost us in the end because uh, the third goal, we all fell asleep. Salah shouldn't have given the ball away in the, the, mid, the, middle, the middle of the pitch. It was just a shocking, shocking pass and... You know, Harvey Barnes was uh, played really well. He probably deserved a goal. 
The second one was a miscommunication, obviously, um, with the, the two players. Uh, like you said, Salah, is the week in training, it can happen. Quebec does, doesn't know Alisson's game inside out. Uh, that only comes with time. Uh, but the, the first goal was, you know, controversial. But we, we've seen these go for us and we've seen them go against us many times. So we, we just had to knuckle knuckle down and get on with it and see it out. Maybe go for a draw, you know, nothing gained, but nothing lost at the same time. It's three points away from Leicester. And in the in the end, on the outlook of the league, it doesn't look like, obviously, we've still got Chelsea to play tonight and we've got uh, West Ham to play as well. Um, it doesn't look like we've dropped... Um, Substantially, it it looks like um, all all the results are dropped in our favour. Touch wood, uh, but yeah, I I feel like it's a missed opportunity. And uh, do you think top four is still uh, the priority for this one, Waka? Um, I think I think we should be aiming at top four to attract players that we want in the summer. Because if we don't have the Champions League football, the likes of Mbappe, they wouldn't want to come here because. It, it is not it's not best for them to play Europa League football wherever we finish. So I think and to keep four, players as well and to keep the yeah, top to keep players, players as, well. as well. I think we should be aiming top four at all costs. If we if we if we can't get in the league, maybe try and win the Champions League. Yeah, I think obviously this this competition comes as a sort of um, it can it can it can be one or two things. It can become a distraction however it can be something that the boys can pick up a little bit of momentum for to take it into the league do you, do you think there's still much hope and there's a big chance of us finish top four or is that dented after that loss to Leicester uh, Salah no we can pick a few good results hope Chelsea hope, hope Chelsea drop points to Newcastle today because I think if they draw we still be fourth because of goal difference I think we pick up a few good results. Everton is crucial, not just because it's a derby, it's because they also have two games in hand. We have to wish they lose to City. And then we just have to pick up results. We have to start being consistent. We can't win two games and then go three games with a loss. You just, you can't be that inconsistent if you want to get top four. So top four is a must, no matter what, top four is a must. Yeah, 100%. I think top four is a must for uh, not only the short term. I think it's it's vital that we, we just keep in there, make sure we just slog it out to the rest of the season, make sure we get top four, go again next year, um, because it's it's about the long term. It's going to be about uh, picking up players, uh, keeping the top players at the club, um, because the likes of Mo Salah, the Manis, the, the, you know, the... The Wine Aldams, they're not. I know Wine Aldams probably going to leave, but you know these top big calibre players, they're not going to stay at a club that are competing for. Um, they're competing for top four and in Europa League, for example. They want they're going to be wanting to play for teams that are, uh, you know, going for title and title and title. And I know this this year's had its, its circumstances, obviously with the injuries to the centre backs. But a point is, you know, it's it's a must that we must get top four. And I do I don't believe the the, the whole element that you know, um, the Champions League can before can come as a distraction. I do think it can come as a distraction. Do I think it will happen? No, because, um, you know, if we go out of the competition, you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, I think, you know, obviously the, the main priority is top four. And if we get anywhere in the Champions League, it will be a, a bonus. But obviously, look ahead to Leipzig. A very good team. They've knocked out some big teams in the European um, UEFA Cup and the, the Champions League. Uh, are you looking forward to this one or are you are you quite... Um, are you quite uh, are you quite anxious going into the, this one? Or a bit of both. We'll start with you, Wakar. I think... I think it would be a good time for uh, the boys to get to play an opposition they haven't played in a while because you know Premier League we played them they played they probably played them week in week out over season over season so this game will come as a game where they can just there's, there's no pressure to like like they have to perform but if you know what I'm saying like they can play like you can. It's like a distraction, basically. Like get get your mind off Premier League, 
you know, new opposition. Yeah, that's all. It's um, a good thing. It's yeah, good thing. you know. Yeah, you if looking forward sense. to this one, Salah? Hmm? Are you looking forward to this one? Or are you guys slightly yeah. nervous for this one? No, I'm not nervous. It's going to be a great game. Sometimes you wish, as a Liverpool fan, that some of the games that are played, you're a neutral fan because his game is going to be a great game. You have Leipzig on the other hand, great manager, young manager, with great tactical awareness. The way he's going to set up his team, probably most likely is a 3 5 2 against, did against United. His tactical approach is going to be, a, again, amazing. The way he's going to... I'm most scared for Trent Alexander-Arnold, though, because you saw what Angelino did to Juan Bissaka, and Juan Bissaka is probably the best really defender. Good. The best it, the best ability-wise as a defender in the league, in my opinion, the best right-back. In a, defender's, in, the, in a defending way, he's the best. And, like, you saw what he did to Juan Bissaka. He never... He got roasted. And Trent, let's be honest, he's not the best at 1v1. We saw that against Sterling, we saw that against Zinchenko. He was awful. And, like, that's my main worry. Angelino versus Trent, how that's going to turn out to be. It's because what now, who's man is going to do, he's going to just target that left side. He's going to go through the left side and, like, say if Henderson's going to be, be playing centre-back, and Milner's going to be out as well because he went in training yesterday. I mean, today. Like, Milner... No, no. Was, no, no, Milner. He was, Milner was covering that right side. He was covering that right side for Trent. Henderson, that's Henderson's job normally. And if Henderson's gone in centre back, then he's not going to be there to track Angelino. So who's going to have to track Angelino? Maybe a more inexperienced Curtis Jones. Well, that's my main worry, the left side of Leipzig. But um, I expect us to get a good result. I think a draw would even be a good result. But we we just need to be out for minute one, not make any mistakes. Just keep on passing the ball around, opening them up. But I think Klopp will take a different approach. Then pressing, I think, as he knows the way Leipzig they have the ball playing uh, defenders like Upi and Konate, and they have the double pivot midfield of um, Conrad Leimer and um, Kevin Campbell and Sabitzer. You know how to break presses. They've done it well against Bayern Dortmund. So I think Klopp will take a different approach to this, but Nagelsmann will stay with his three five two and look to utilize Angelino and try to get something from the left. Yeah, they they do play. Uh... They do play some good football. They, they are on the front foot. I, I'm a bit scared, like you said, for Trent. I feel like um, he w- he's obviously been targeted um, of these past four or five games. Well, the whole season, really, because he is vulnerable at those 1v1s and he can get done very easily. Um, what I noticed when he was up against Harvey Barnes on the weekend, he, he wasn't sticking close to him. I think there was an opportunity where Barnes whipped the ball in and Vardy had a, a, a free header. So, He's got to stick to his man. He's got to be on it tomorrow because if if Leipzig do get anything out of this game tomorrow, it will most likely be down their left hand side and now we're right. So uh, they're obviously in really good form at the moment. Um, uh, they've won five of their last six uh, games. They've fifty four percent of their goals come from open play and twenty four percent of their goals come from set piece. Um, how scared are you for uh, Trent? Because I, I I understand you'll probably start with no Milner. There was a question that Milner may come in, but obviously he got injured. Um, whether he'd come in as a slight reinforcement for the back four. How scared are you for um, Trent and Angelino facing off in this one at Waka? Um, I'm really scared because Trent, the problem is he, he just lets them go past him like, there's occasions where he'll make a challenge, but against City, when Sterling won the penalty, what's his name? Trent just let him go past him. And then Fabinho, he's not a centre back, so he'll just make the challenge and they got the penalty. But the yeah, problem with Trent is he just doesn't he doesn't make a challenge. He just lets them go. He just lets them go past him. And then so I think Trent, he's a bit I think he's a bit I think he's under pressure. Like he doesn't want to make a challenge because then he might he might give them a free kick and then it might become his fault. But I think what he really should be focused on is sticking to his man, trying his hardest not to let him beat. If you get beat, you get beat. But at least stick a leg out or make a challenge or something. No, he's, been, he's been good. There's a false image on him this season because it's only for the past few games he's been lacking defensively. But for yeah. the, the whole season, I saw a stat somebody the other day, I think he has one of the most best 
interceptions and the one v ones. Probably one of the best for a right back this season. So I'm not saying Trent is the like awful. He's defending. not the worst, but <laughs> he's good. But when he comes up against skillful, pacey players, then he suffers because. And what you said about Stern, he couldn't stick a foot out because it was in the box. Fabinho had to do it. But then Angelino is just a good player in it. So let's see. Hopefully we can. Yeah. Hopefully Klopp can tackle Angelino with some sort of tactical. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, Liverpool have got to be um, well disciplined in the middle of the park and especially on the flanks because, um, like I said in the previous stats, uh, Leipzig have a known to score one in four goals from a set piece. So we have to be on our A game and we have to be solid at the back. Obviously, he's going to be no Fabinho, he's going to be no Milner in this game. Uh, no Cater as well. Uh, Klopp confirmed in his um pre match press conference at Caters. Uh, no longer injury. He's injury free. However, he's building back his match fitness up in Kirkby. Um, he, yeah. Um, we'll get on to the starting 11 prediction. Um, who do you think's going in goal? Uh, there's been calls for Alisson to be dropped. I think they're, they're absolutely silly. Uh, you, you don't drop your best goalkeeper. Um, Alisson for me starts 100%. Any, any, uh, any um, can I going into the goal today, uh, tomorrow, guys? Waka, um, Alisson, 100%. He's, he's made mistakes, but he just needs to get his confidence back up because he was the best goalkeeper in the league. And when we won the Champions League, the best goalkeeper in the world, he, he just needs a little bit of confidence. He needs to get his confidence back. And then we've seen it against Leicester, he, he made a mistake, but then there was he, he made. Some quick double saves, and which is impressive. That's, that's the Allison we, we need, but he just his confidence is low, so he's just a bit bit nervy to make decisions. But if he gets his confidence back, best goalkeeper in the league again. But for me, hundred percent Allison. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, Salah, uh, Allison to start. Yeah, of course, no other keeper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the back four, slightly more interesting. Robertson, I'm going for Robertson, Trent, Kabak. I want to say Phillips, purely because I want to see Hendo in the midfield. But I'm sure, I'm adamant he's going to go Henderson in the, in the back four as well, um, which is obviously a kick in the teeth again, because Ben Davis has picked up a knock as well. Uh, what are your back four predictions, Waka? Um, Trent, Robbo... Kabak and I think it'll be Reese Williams or Henderson. I think it'll be Henderson. Do you think? I think Reece it'll Williams. be Henderson. I, I don't think um Nathaniel Phillips can play in the Champions League this season. No, no, no. He, he got he got registered. I was I was listening oh, to the red team. Yeah, because they did like a re-register thing um after the transfer window. So we included him in the, uh, the okay, re-register. Nathaniel Phillips then, hundred percent. Yeah. What, what about you, Salah? Be midfield. Trent, Kabak, Davies, Robertson. Chuck in Davies there. I'd say Phillips, but Phillips can't play against a team that don't cross the ball in a lot. He, he'll struggle against a team that know how to play and build up. Reese williams is way too slow for Leipzig. Leipzig have yeah. the pace of Haidara and Gilinho again. Just Chuck in Ben Davies. Ben Davies is fast. His ball-playing ability is good. You could say he has been he's been out from a knock and he is a championship player. I did say not to start him against C and Leicester. I still stand by that. He, sh- he should not start against Leipzig tomorrow. But I want Henderson in that midfield because he needs to block. He needs to protect Trent and he needs to block Angelino. Yeah. So I'm just saying yeah, they're just taking Kabak and Davies. Whatever happens, yeah, happens. Yeah, I think it's vital that Henderson has to uh, come across and hopefully Wijnaldum starts. He covers off the Robertson area if Robertson goes up the pitch. Um, is Kabak travelling? Is he is he travelling? Because I know he did pick up a knock. Is he travelling, Salah? Kabak, Kabak, Kabak was in training today. Oh no, it's Davies. It's Davies travelling. Davies, Davies, oh. Davies was in training as well. Davies is. Bad. Oh, was he? Oh, good, yeah, good. All oh, right. Oh well, yeah. I I might change my. My starting eleven to to Davis. I think Davis will come in, but if not, I think Nat Phillips will step in. And uh, we'll uh, right. We'll get onto the midfield. So who's going in the six? Uh, we'll start with you, Wakar. Um, I think 
it should be Henderson because Thiago, he gives away stupid free kicks and he gave a stupid one against Leicester and it cost us. Yeah, yeah, I think it should be Henderson. Now. And I think if if Klopp does go with uh, Davis and come back in the back four, I think he will go for Henderson in six. Salah, what, what, who do you think will start in the six? I uh, think Ronaldo will start in six, but my preferred six, eight, and mid ten would be I'd go Thiago in the six because Thiago can play. Thiago knows how to play against Leipzig and those deep passes can break because. You know how high Haidara and Angelino are going to be. They're going to be way. They're going to be a lot higher than Trent Robertson. So Thiago, his ability, his passing ability from the six, you just ping a ball from the wing. Salah money can get. So I'll just go Thiago in the six. Uh, when uh, Henderson in the eight as a box to box. The thing is, this is where it comes in because I don't want Gian, I don't want Gini Wijnaldum to play a lot now because. I don't know. He just doesn't look the same player now that his contract's gone. I'll play Curtis, but yeah. Curtis, Curtis has played big games, but to chuck him into a big Champions League game, I think Klopp won't do that. So I think I want the midfield to be Thiago, Gini and Hendo. Yeah, I think maybe chucking Curtis in, uh, although he's done well in the big games, um, yeah. when you play against teams in European football, who are likely to suffocate you in the midfield. Uh, maybe it's a bit too soon to chuck in Curtis Jones, which 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 means that I would probably go with Henderson in the six, uh, Thiago in the eight, or he could be in the six, but I think he would start in the eight, and then um, Wijnaldum in the, the on the left as a box to box. Um, but yeah, who, who, what's the rest of your midfield whack up? Um, Thiago, the same with you, number eight. I, I would prefer playing like a more attacking role than defending. So. He doesn't give away too many stupid free kicks. And um, Gini Ronaldo. I think Curtis Jones, I don't think he'll play him as well because big European game. He has played well against the big oppositions, but just keep him on the bench. Yeah, 100%. I think um, it's it's vital that Thiago isn't as loose in his challenges because, uh, you know, they, they're deadly from set pieces as well. Um uh, so front three, uh, any shouts for Mane to be dropped? Never. He always has that kind of instinct in Champions League. He knows what, he's been off form, but I'm never dropping. Maybe if he had dropped a fit for this game, I was going to drop him for Firmino, even though he's been, even though he played good against Leicester. I, th- I don't think Firmino's at it anymore. I think there's the best, the best attribute of him was his link up play. And even his link up play, although he got a good assist, his link up play is still. Now is what's the word for it? Now is his ability is decreasing in his link up play as well. Because we saw against Leicester when he tried to link play, he lost the ball a few times. But if he had Jota fit for this game, I would have played Jota at centre forward. But it has to be the normal front three: uh, Salah, Mane, Firmino. Yeah, I think it would be Salah, Mane, Firmino as well. Um, I think yeah, Mane, Mane's got the killer instinct. Um, where when he gets the ball. He's the one play out the front three, which you're not sure what he's going to do. You don't know if he's going to take it on his outside or you're going to cut back in. Whereas Mo Salah, you know he's going to cut back on his favoured left foot. Firmino, you know he's going to sit deep and uh, you know he's going to give it and try and build something from the in between the lines. So, uh, yeah, I'm going Firmino, Salah, Mane. What are you going, work out? Same front um, three? Yeah, the famous front three. I think if we still had if Jota was fit or if we had Minamino, then maybe chuck one, one of them in. But I, I don't want Divo Karigi playing because he just isn't what he was. And the front three, they are the front three. Mane, he can turn up in Champions League games. He's very unpredictable. Firmino, he'll just drop deep and he'll, that, would, that would give us an advantage in the, the midfield. And Salah, you know... You want him 1v1 with the goalkeeper because nine times out of ten he'll score. Yeah, I think there's uh, there's no chance of Rigi will start because um yeah, I don't know, I don't know why, but I just feel he's he's a bit too slow for the, the, the pace of the game. Like you yeah, could chuck him in down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like um I feel like when Firmino gets it, he'll give it quicker. Whereas Divock Origi holds on for it a bit too long, uh, yeah. a bit longer than he should. Um, 
you know, obviously, if there's something, um, if if we're still being held, I wouldn't be surprised to see him come in. However, Klopp could have the approach that you know, sit sit in, make sure you get a clean sheet, don't let them score, and take that back to the second leg. But um, score predictions, guys. Uh, we'll start with you, Salah. Wait, let me just go in. Um, I think it's going to be complicated the away goal rules because. Our fixture at Anfield, we're not going to play at Anfield. Most likely, 88% we're not playing at Anfield for the return yeah. leg. We'll get switched. So I think it's crucial not to let Leipzig score because if it was, if we were at Anfield, we could have defended because that's our ground. We've, we we did lose there for 69 games. So we know how to defend the lead at Anfield most of the time. So, like, so I don't expect him to go fully defensive. So, I don't know. My score prediction is going to be a nil-nil draw. No, 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 no draw. I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. They'll, we'll get a win. They'll, they'll get a goal. I think it'll be 1-1. One, one. Yeah, what are, you, what are you going to work out? I think Liverpool 1-0, get that away goal, and then just focus on the second leg and make sure they don't score. Yeah, I, I'm going for a slightly different approach. I, I, I did a preview video on my YouTube channel, Clock Talk TV, by the way. And I went for a 2-0 win to Liverpool. Um, but after analysing Angelino and his targets, I do see Leipzig getting one. But I think um, teams that play on the front foot kind of suit our offensive style, which I think will play um, pivotal in this game. And I think Liverpool will win 3-1. Um, Salah to get the two two goals and uh, Firmino to get a goal as well. I'm going 3-1. And that is it for the um, Leipzig preview. Please like, subscribe, turn the post notifications on for more L5 Star FC content. And um, yeah, let's hit uh, 30 likes on this video.